Have you ever wondered how much did a house sell for? Or perhaps how much did my neighbor's home sell for? Well, in New York City, you can verify much of this, especially for condominium apartments and other real property, uh, on various sources, uh, such as various public websites which pull public data, or directly uh, viewing public data on Acris. We'll show you how. So let's start with a example building. Google 75 Wall Street. Let's go to the first result. There are many various public websites, such as the New York Times, Street Easy, and other, many other sites that do pull public data. Um, take a look. This is a condo building. It has quite a few units for sale. Uh, let's just verify some of what uh, has sold in this building. So, like any public website, you do have to take this with a grain of salt. Uh, when you see no longer available, for example, on this site, uh, this definitely does not mean it has sold. If you just take a look, you'll notice that this uh, was actually currently listed by another broker. So this is simply a uh, former broker's listing that wasn't successful in selling. So don't, don't, you should ignore these. These are basically previous attempted sales. Um, and sometimes for the, you know, it, it can be tried by different brokers as well for the same unit. Um, when you see uh, sold, cannot find government record, uh, be careful about this because this simply means that the, uh, the broker uh, said it was sold. So basically closed out the listing, said it was sold, and this is the last listing price, uh, but it's unverified. Um, fortunately, in this specific place, if you look just a little bit further down around the listing, you'll see that there is a later verification. So this website pulled a recorded sale uh, for this listing from Acris. So the actual sale price was 1.06 mil. You can actually click on this to find out more information. Um, let's take a look. So this is pulled from Acris. So just, just to recap, going back to that uh, example, you'll see that when you see only just this, be very wary because this is taking the broker's word for it. In New York City, the data quality is uh, pretty lax when it comes to the RLS, the revenue RLS. Uh, there's, uh, you know, versus some of these other uh, regions, MLS systems, it can be quite strict with data quality. Uh, it's pretty relaxed here in the city, which uh, brokers seem to like. Um, but as a result, as a consumer, we do have to be careful because this, again, last listing price, this actually did sell, is verified, but um, it is for a lower price. So be careful about that. Uh, when you see records like this, for example, sold and then asking, uh, oftentimes this simply means that uh, this was verified uh, or the data was, was verified through public records and it's one line item. So let's take a look just to confirm. It says sold and it was verified. So this specific site, uh, you know, they essentially pulled this into one line item because they were able to verify this number. Um, you take a look. So recorded, so listing sold. So you'll see in this case, this is the same thing. The broker marked it as sold, 695, the last listing price. Uh, it was actually sold for 675. And again, this is a recorded sale. So you can confirm this. Let's go back. This is an interesting example as well. So 29C, you don't see an actual listing by a broker from here anywhere, but it is marked as sold. So this is, well, let's see, 29C. Um, it was attempted, there was an attempted sale in late 2018 and then it was marked as sold. So let's take a look, 29C, sale recorded. So it was attempted for sale, and then four months later there was a sale recorded. So this is interesting because uh, this could mean a variety of things. If you, know, if you didn't see any broker listing at all, you just see a recorded closing, perhaps it was an off-market transaction of some sorts. And because this is, has a weird number, let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. 
So as you see, it didn't actually sell. It seems like the internal ownership, so this is a not, a, not an arm's length transaction. So the inter internal ownership changed, but they were related parties. So basically one of the parties sold out their half of their share and it seems, or I'm sorry, um, the seller um, split half their shares with someone else, it seems like. It's a partial related sale for a you know, non-market sum. So that's what that is. Um, you know, sometimes in very, in very rare instances, you might see, for example, this 29C, and for some reason, the owner was able to persuade the broker to take it off market while it was in contract. Uh, brokers don't like to do that because they like to get credit, but let's say they were able to do that and it did end, end up selling later. Um, and the broker got paid, or perhaps it was through, you know, the contract expired and the broker was able to find a direct buyer uh, and it posted. So if you do see a random uh, line item that says recorded closing um, without any attended sales, it's most likely either an arm's length, non-arm's length transaction that got posted, or it uh, was a off-market transaction. So perhaps a neighbor bought another neighbor's apartment, something like that. So. That, th those are the most likely outcomes. And again, this is just stuff that you see on any number of these public websites. It's not necessarily accurate. Uh, I would be very hesitant to say that because um, you know the w only way to truly verify something like this is to look on ACRIS, which is the true uh, source of all public data in New York City. So let's take a look. This is what ACRIS looks like. You can find it simply by Googling ACRIS So in this case, it's asking you for a bar borough and then a block and a lot number. So you might not have this handy. Uh, remember, a, a lot number um, is a identifier for a specific uh, piece of real property. So either a single condo unit um, or a, a house, right? But keep in mind for co-ops, it's a bit more difficult because a co-op is a single corporation that owns an entire building um, with many co-op shareholders who are technically tenants, so a co-op would only have one lot number, but an individual condominium apartment will have its own lot number. Um, anyway, you might not have these, these BBL numbers available, so just do an address and parcel lookup. We're going to try to verify this number, 1.635 from 29M. Hit enter. The BBL automatically populated. The document search. I would do maybe last five years. I would do deeds and conveyances. These others, not as interesting, especially since you know you're looking at a, um, a real property where deeds are they're the means of transfer. So you'll see this is it. The sale did happen, party one, party two. And the sale price is 29M. Sale price is up here, 1.635, which matches. So this essentially actually verifies it. Uh, this is this data is correct. The sale did happen on April 12th, so this data was pulled correctly. But it's always nice to be able to verify this yourself on the actual uh, public record, and this is it. Now, what about verifying home sold sale prices for a co-op apartment? Well, co-ops are a different animal, but it's possible to verify their sale prices on public search websites and on Actress public data as well. Let's take an example in this West Village. 31 Jane Street, 15 GH. If you take a look, let's go to this building first. So it's currently for sale, but if you take a look at the past sales, you scroll through, 
can do also a um, all unit search. Search for 15GH. Let's click on the uh, listing. Sometimes you can see the unit history that it sold. Um, so you can see it here. You can also, for example, if you go to the list active listing, you can go down, price history, you'll see that, again, this is where the broker marked it as sold, but actually went across uh, above ask. This is the recorded sell. So this is the last listing price, essentially, when the broker marked it as sold, but this is the actual recorded sale price. Let's take a look at this. And you'll see that they pulled this supposedly from public records. Now, let's verify this for ourselves. Same thing, enter the street address. Even though it's a co-op, put in the unit number, press enter. Get document search. In this case, you can't do the last five years because uh, this was sold in 2012. So let's put in a later date. hit all document classes, <clears throat> and you'll notice that this is a bit different. You'll see that both RPTT and RETT is what shows instead of a D-transfer, this is a co-op, so this will have to uh, be equivalent to a, a D-transfer notice. So take a look, press details, and you'll do, you will see that uh, this sale did occur. So the entire lot was transferred for 2.7 mil, and this occurred on July 31st, 2012. So this data is correct. Uh, you were able to verify your, for yourself and Acris and the public record. You see who the buyers and the sellers were. And this is, uh, this is helpful. And in case you are curious, RPTT stands for Real Property Transfer Tax and RETT stands for Real Estate Transfer Tax. Uh, if you are interested in what these, uh, these major seller closing costs are, please check out the House of website. Uh, we have a, a recent article on changes to the New York City and New York State transfer taxes. Uh, which are typically paid by sellers in a normal resale transaction. So the rates have changed. We encourage you to check out www.houseit.com and check out our blog and uh, read our latest article. These are important changes. Uh, we'll glance through the article for you, but uh, it is important. We do have a calculator for you to give you uh, an estimate of what your closing costs, including your transfer taxes specifically are. Uh, based on various price levels and property types. So please check that out. We have a lot of great content and we would love for you to uh, give us some feedback. If, for example, you uh, like what you see, please uh, like this video and subscribe to it or leave a comment and we will get right back to you. Uh, we do appreciate your viewership and of course, if you are looking to buy or sell property in New York, uh, please give us a, uh, a shout. We have lots of partner brokers who are very established and experienced in the city who are happy to discreetly offer you services for the fraction of the price of a uh, traditional commission arrangement. For example, sellers can sell for essentially 0% through our agent-assisted FISBO uh, flat fee service, and uh, sellers can also take advantage of our discounted full service options, which are uh, dis discreetly discounted, 1% uh, to the 1% uh, uh, listing fee versus 6% regardless of what happens. And on the buy side, you can save uh, 20000 or more on the uh, average New York City apartment to help cover your closing costs. And this comes from the Buyer Agents Commission. If you're interested in any of these programs, please give us a shout. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.